Hello, I'm John Graham, and welcome to our right and left, 190th Right and Left Discussion Forum. We hold our televised discussions twice monthly to demonstrate the value of civil, productive, open-minded political dialogue. Today, our panel will discuss battling our biases. The key word there is power. Today's panel begins with Dr. Ronald Chamberlain, retired senior research chemist. Joe Gaines, former faculty member at the University of Akron. Patty Haskins, former member of the Wadsworth City Council. No, I suppose you're still a member. Still till January. Still the first yeah. of the year. Right. And uh, uh, Brian Laubaugh, president of R&D Financial Services. Ron, it seems that people are more prone than ever and more intractable with, uh, 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 with their opinions and biases. And it's uh, causing a deep divide in the population. Do you agree what has caused this change and is it harmful? I do agree. And I have some, some ideas about what's caused it and whether or not it's harmful. I, I've been thinking really about this whole area of interaction for quite a very long time. And I'm always interested as a, as a trained scientist, interested in causes of things. And about 1970, a man named Robert Ardrey wrote a, an interesting book. Robert, Mr. Ardrey was a, a, a novelist and a playwright and a scriptwriter. He actually uh, had an Oscar nomination, but he re reverted to his, his uh, educational roots as an anthropologist and a behavioral scientist. And he wrote a book in which he laid out a theory that many species have a strong desire to generate territory for themselves, a place where they feel safe, a place where they can flourish, a place that they are willing to defend with their lives if possible. And he called this a biological imperative. The title of his book was The Territorial Imperative, an imperative being a, a biological urge which is inborn, such as the, the need to, uh, the, the need to uh, assuage your hunger and a need for uh, self-protection and a need for reproduction. Uh, this was controversial for two reasons. One is he, he published it in the form of a, a popular book rather than a scientific journal. Seems like in the 1970s, people were willing to listen to what scientists had to say and buy, this, buy their books. Uh, and, uh, and also it equated human behavior with that of many other lower species, particularly our primate cousins, the great apes and the chimpanzees and, and, the, and the monkeys. Uh, and this, is give, this gave rise then to tribalism, where we've joined together with other people to get this safe space. In the present day, this can explain, and this, by the way, is a theory that has really been widely accepted in, in the scientific community. In, in the present day, it, it, it can be explained such things as allegiance to your church group, allegiance to your alma mater, uh, whether you're a Browns or a Steelers fan, uh, and particularly political uh, political uh, uh, parties and your allegiance to those. Now, today, I'm, and so it's neither good nor bad. It's a neutral thing. It is part of our nature. What we do with it is another, is another thing entirely. And since, for, since the advent of the uh, things like uh, popular TV stations like the MSNBCs and the Fox Newses, which are highly biased, and the, particularly the rise of social media, where now our tribe is not just our small circle of friends, but our tribe can be drawn from the entire world. And so we have very strong opinions and we have lots of people, can find lots of people who share those opinions and lots of people who hold them very, very strongly. And uh, in, during the Trump administration, I made a number of efforts to uh, reach out and, and join various conservative uh, Facebook groups. I'm on Facebook. And uh, I usually left because I got tired of being insulted. I was very, I was completely unable to start any kind of civil discord with, with folks there, including a couple of my own cousins who are very, very conservative. So, uh, yeah, I don't know that it is really worse than it has ever been, but it's now out in the open. It's very widespread. It's easier to do. Is it harmful? Yes, it's harmful because it's uncivil. 
Uh, it's just interesting, and I read the Akron Beacon Journal online, and today there were two editorials, one by Jonah Goldberg and one by a, a you know, a, a your turn a local, he's a retired uh, educator, and which speak exactly to this problem. I, I would urge you to to read those. <laughs> they're, they're very relevant to our discussion here about uh, about civil discourse and uh, where it where it has failed. And one of the things I've learned in, in this group is to try to alter some of my own biases. And I know I have them. I buy, I'm biased in terms uh, in, in favor of, of scientific explanation for things such as evolution and uh, gender issues and climate, climate change and the causes thereof. I'm it and the vaccine and the anti-masking thing. It really it really disturbs me no end that folks are willing to accept something which which has not accept something which has very strong scientific proof behind it. Uh, that's my bias. And I'm unlikely to alter that in most cases. Now, uh, having said that here in this, our, our forum for civil discord, I found it extremely, extremely valuable. And uh, I'm, I've been willing to listen, I've been willing to learn, and I have changed a number of my opinions, and I hope I've changed some of yours. So, yes, you, it's harmful. You definitely have, Ron. <laughs> Joe, where are you coming from on this? Well, I, I'm in the middle, as always. <laughs> uh, I, I totally agree with, with Ron. I think there is a problem. Uh, there's a deep divide. And I don't think it's good. And I think in some cases, it's even politically inclined uh, by the political parties. Uh, in some cases, not all. Um, it, it's harmful to us because it makes us have to, to decide what side we're on. And maybe we're not on a side. Maybe there isn't a side to be on. Maybe you want to, uh, I like this part of it, but I don't like that part of it. Uh, and that's how I am. I, uh, I don't know. Uh, I have my biases, but I never think of them as biases until I, I brought up. I, it would be worthless for me to ask what your biases are if you don't think of them. Well, education, I have a bias towards education. I think you should have an education. I think college is a, almost a necessity now. Um, is that a bias or an opinion? Oh, that, that distinction is uh, one for uh, another discussion, I think. Patty, where are you coming from? Well, first of all, I think everyone has to realize that we, we are all biased in some way, shape, or form. Um, I, I think we also need to look at the fact that a lot of the biases that we have are not based upon fact or, or actual knowledge, but more from our life experiences, uh, where we grew up, uh, the biases and, and thoughts that people have on politics can vary depending upon whether you were born in Ohio or whether you were born in Florida or Alabama or New York City. Um, we, we are biased by our parents and our family's beliefs. Um, we are given a certain set of facts in our home that we take to be real and true. And then we assert them without examining other opinions, unfortunately. Um, I, I think it's important that all of us recognize that there are different opinions in the world and we need to listen to them as opposed to taking one stance on an issue and not listening to the other side. Uh, this is where we run into difficulty with our biases. You know, unfortunately, we come up with some particular idea on the way things are, and we limit our scope of knowledge about the facts by only listening to certain people. Uh, this is, I, I think, implicit uh, with a lot of political issues and with the use of the internet. For example, let's say that I were 
to come up with the idea that I'm a QAnon follower. And I believe that John F. Kennedy Jr. is going to reappear in Texas and join forces with Donald Trump to be his running mate in 2024. <laughs> now, to all of this seems, this seems ludicrous, mm. or at least to everyone sitting here, but there are hundreds of people that believe that and appeared in Dallas, it was it yesterday, I think, waiting for him to appear at the same time Kennedy was uh, assassinated. And they go for this and they validate it by citing or finding someone on the internet, Q, who told them this. And this bias then allows them to do something that most of us would think was really not all that logical. Unfortunately, that's the case with so many things that are, that are going on now in politics. And unfortunately, they're very volatile issues, whether it be abortion, whether it be gun control, whether it be climate change. There is always somebody you can find on the internet that'll agree with your particular bias. Mm -hmm. And you can always use them as a supporter for that bias. Unfortunately, the harm then that comes is that we end up with large swaths of people um, believing that the 2020 election was stolen and unfortunately hurting the, the reliability that we have and the results of our elections. Uh, we have people that believe that vaccines are going to magnetize us if we get them for COVID, and that's a that's a that's a new one on me. I haven't. Oh yeah, that. yeah, that's oh, a, that, that's a big <laughs> one. <laughs> you magnetize you. There was a lady that testified in the Ohio State Legislature about this, and she was citing as this doctor who um, feels that you are magnetized if you take the COVID vaccine, and she was in the legislature, putting keys and bobby pins on certain parts of her body to show that they would stick. <laughs> but she, unfortunately, she can go online and find all kinds of people that, that believe that. You know, and, and the problem here is that many of these outlandish, what I would consider at least outlandish theories, come about because people have a bias in the first place. Yes. They have a bias against a vaccine. They have a bias, uh, a bias against a Republican. They have a bias against a Democrat. And then they go online and they find all this backup. And then they act upon it. And you get serious consequences when that is done. You know, unfortunately, we don't have people are not willing to accept facts or things that are anymore. And, you know, they don't want to think. <laughs> the, well, the Declaration of Independence, and let's go back, says that we hold these truths to be self evident. There are some truths that are self evident, but unfortunately, because of our bias, you know, maybe, you know, we had a uh, difficulty with a government official some clear along our, in our lives. And so we determined that, no, we don't trust all the government. Uh, maybe, you know, we had a run in um, or with a, a, a person of a different color or a person of a different ethnicity. And therefore we then have that bias against that entire group of people. Mm -hmm. These things are harmful. Yeah. And they're the easy way out too. Yeah. And before you get to, to I've I got just one quick comment. It's painful to give up your biases. Oh, yeah. It, it creates what's known as cognitive dissonance. If you have a series of, of very strongly held beliefs and suddenly you're confronted with evidence against that, it's painful. It's painful to change. We don't want to admit we're wrong. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's true. 
Uh, Brian, the last time we had a brief conversation uh, about uh, your Mormonism, uh, and uh, you made a comment that in school, kids found out you were a Mormon and wanted to know how many wives your father had, <laughs> even, even though that has not been part of Mormonism for, what, 100 years or more? At least. Uh, yeah. So, so you used to bias up front and personal. Uh, what are your thoughts? On, what are your thoughts on uh, this topic? Well, I want Patty to know because she had the vaccine, her personality is even more magnetic. magnetic. Ah, I knew you were going to say. <laughs> Whoa! Well, I'm drawn and to her. Patty is going to be sorely missed in the city, um, and um, she did a great job. And hopefully, she'll run again. And she was a voice of reason. She's just a a, a great person. Whether you've got a D or an R after your name, you know, Patty uh, laid that aside and did what was best for the city and Thanks used God. the uh, intelligence that she has uh, to benefit the city. And she's going to be uh, she's going to be really missed. Well, ever, um, ever, ever, ever since I've known Patty, I've had a pro Haskin bias. Yes, I, I have that bias. I, I consider Patty a friend. I don't think she would cold cock me if she saw me at Walmart or anything like that, you know. <laughs> I mean, she might sneer at me a couple of times, but that's OK. Um, uh -huh. You know, one of the issues, I think, and, and all the things that have been said so far have, have really um, hit the mark. Um, and, and I agree with Patty. There are biases uh, all over the place. You know, Al Gore still doesn't believe he lost that election. Hillary Clinton still doesn't believe that she lost to Donald Trump. She's still scratching her head. We've got an a individual down at Stacey Abrams. She cannot believe that she did not win. She's going around saying that, you know, the, the, the election down there in Georgia was was uh, uh, fixed and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that kind of stuff from our political leaders doesn't help the situation at all. Uh, and there are loonies all over the place. Uh, we've got them on our side of the aisle and the Democrats certainly have them on their side of the aisle. And, you know, and, and unfortunately, that has polarized uh, the political discourse. And that's not good. Uh, we have to be able to come together at the end of the day and do what's best for the country. Uh, the latest thing that was floating around there was that the Biden administration was gonna give $450,000 per immigrant because of the Trump uh, stay in place immigration issue. And uh, you know that looked like it had a head of steam. And finally the Biden administration came out and said, no, they're not gonna do that, but they still have, they're still open because some of these people have sued I guess, the government, because they weren't allowed to come into the country. Um, you know, separation of children. Uh, it was separate. They, they were separated from Family the children at the border. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, the only thing I have to say is I take a couple of my kids down there and get separated for four hundred fifty thousand dollars. You know, I mean? <laughs> <laughs> don't don't tell them that. But <laughs> So yeah, bias is all around us and you just have to, as you mature, I think you learn to deal with your biases. Um, and, you know, it is part of human nature. Um, it, it's just something that is innate and, and you have to learn to control that and, and to look at things, hopefully as you mature with a lot different, I, I guess, uh, a different light on things. Um, the internet and social media has not done us any favors whatsoever. Um, and I've harped on this from the very beginning. I think a majority of our problems uh, stem from social media. And it, it really, you know, it gives silly things legs. I mean, you know, silly things like Patty brought up that uh, JFK Jr. and Donald Trump were gonna meet in Daly Plaza and all that kind of stuff and a couple hundred loonies show up, you know, uh, I mean, there are plenty of hoaxes uh, that that people actually believe in. Uh, I, I think one of them was that the emergency broadcasting system was going to go off and martial law was going to be declared and everybody stand by because it's, this is going to happen. Well, it doesn't happen. Uh, and that's one of the issues with, you know, the uh, social media. Everything gets legs. And all of a sudden, you get people whipped up for no reason whatsoever, and they get entrenched. Um, so you don't just have to watch Fox News. 
If you watch MSNBC or CNN and some of the other programs, um, they're stunned. They are stunned that the lieutenant governor of Virginia is a black woman that was a Marine and she speaks eloquently. They're, they're just tongue tied. They don't know how she's somehow she's a racist. She's a white supremacist. This lady, I mean, I don't, if she had a D behind her name, I'd vote for her. You know, she checked all the boxes for me, but because she's a Republican, then, you know, she, I guess she's just not black enough. And that's the bias that I think that hurts our political body, the, pol the body politic. I think it hurts it when we, when, when you can't be a Republican and black. You have to be, you know, like Joe Biden said, you know, you ain't black if you don't vote for me, that type of thing. I, I, I don't think that really helps the, the discourse at all. And I hope we pull back from these fringes and, and deal with things with, with a lot saner, a lot more intelligence, a lot more common sense uh, when we, when, you know, when, when we see things like that and, and maybe have a little thicker skin when we see something online. Um, it, you know, it just amazes me when you look at some of these things that social media puts out there. And I think we're really just being used by the social media companies, by Google, mm -hmm. by Facebook, by Twitter, by Instagram. We're just being used by them. We're making them billions of dollars because every time we click on that stupid little, you know, the little story, uh, you know, it used to be, and I'll end with this. It used to be when you were standing in line at the grocery store, there was a couple of those newspapers, the Enquirer, you know, it was yeah. always yeah. Uh, some actress had an alien baby, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, some actor lost 43 pounds overnight. How did he do that? And, you know, you look at that and you take it off. And it's like this, this is just garbage. And I think that's for me personally, that's what most of social media has become, a dumpster fire. And it's, it's the National Enquirer on steroids. And it, it's not helping us at all with anything. It's not furthering anything whatsoever. And, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm for, you know, basically going in there and gutting those things and just getting people back to living normally um, and, and, you know, getting off social media and some of those things. It's just not, it's not helping us. There's a fine okay. line between satire, which is good and necessary, yeah. and, and a lot of the other stuff that you see. So. Oh, exactly. And, and I'm all for that. I'm all for satire. You know, and I, I think that we need to start talking to one another. And while you might say, well, chat rooms on the internet are a form of communication, it's done basically anonymously in, in many cases, and you don't feel any repercussions. But when you have a discussion, you know, just like we do, where you listen to other people, where you start to understand their viewpoint, maybe stand in their shoes and see where they're coming from and why they formulated the policies or the ideas that they had, we can come to better understand a situation. I mean, and, and it is difficult. As I mentioned before, there's you know, very volatile issues out there. You know, and let's say gun control, you may be adamantly opposed to guns, you may be adamantly for them, but you need to understand where the other person come, is coming from, what their views are, um, you know, look at the actual facts on what guns have done, what they have not done, their yeah. safety and necessity of that. Yeah. And you can come to a more civil answer to perhaps a problem that we might have or at least kind of getting rid of your biases and listening to the facts and coming up with something that's yeah. livable for everyone yeah. so you know to, to your point patty um several summers ago and robin shares this story it's public she would get letters and emails from people that wanted to defund the police all the letters looked very similar and so she took the time, there were eight or nine that came in. They were just railing on the police, defund the police. They were racist and all this stuff. stuff. Well, she took the time to call those people. And they were a little surprised that she actually would call them, but she would call and she'd say, you know, I really want to understand your point. Would you please 
share with me, you know, what, you know, what you really, what you really think will solve the problem. Well, after they got done talking, it, it was very clear that they got caught up in this movement that was online. They took a letter, a form letter off, and they fired it off to the mayor because they should fire all the police. So Robin then had a chance to talk with her about the police and all the training they do. And her feeling was that we should spend more on police to get the training that they need because these men and women put up with a lot of stuff that we don't on a, on a, and, on and that's a daily. the movement in the country now. Yeah. All of these cities that attempted yeah. to defund have yeah. gone back, whoa, we cannot yeah. do this. So. Yeah. so it's understanding, it's it's being able to talk about it and not get you know our positions hardened, just understanding where people are coming from. And I don't think that happens. On, it certainly doesn't happen on social media. Well, we don't want to listen anymore. Right. I, I think Patty brought that up too. We just don't listen. Uh, we have our opinion and that's it. And I don't care what yours is, you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think and, ever, si ever since the televised moment of uh, Donald Trump and his wife coming down the escalator after he announced his candidacy, at that moment, hate became a virtue. Uh, the uh, uh, so-called mainstream media spent the next five years still doing it, hating Donald Trump. And the um, when hating. I think of it, pardon me. What do you mean by hating? Hate, hate, hate. Oh, hate. hating. Okay. I, I still keep thinking though of the vendetta that Mitch McConnell had against Barack Obama. <laughs> you know, just, I don't care what this man says; I'm not going to vote for it. You know. Well, he was determined. But it comes to... both ways, John. It's, it's been. Yeah. Oh, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think I've ever seen uh, hatred as intense and widespread as the hatred for Donald Trump in, in the Virginia uh, governor's race. The, uh, President Obama and uh, uh, Biden and uh, somebody else, all they could talk about was that uh, it was uh, it was Trump. Trump, Trump, Trump. Uh, hate, hate, hate. You know, if, if they would have talked about the uh, policies that the um, a Republican candidate was uh, espousing, that would have been different. Uh, yeah, that was an interesting I would, like to, have, I would yeah. like to have seen a real discussion about parents' role in the children's education, uh, a real discussion. Panelists, I'm sorry, but your time is up. Oh, already. You are watching WCTV, Wadsworth Community Television.